We're only a few minutes away from Jay Powell's speech, and we can't preempt him. Right. But yesterday, you said you'd be happy to leave rates where they are if the economy stays about where it is. Right. But this morning, we had further evidence from China that we may see the trade war extend for right. quite some time. Policy works with long and variable lags, as right. they always say. Right. So when you look out eight months to a year, can you say you would be you would want to stay on hold or yeah. do you need to act now to get ahead of something? No, I think right now we are where we need to be. That said, there are clearly these downside risks to the economy. And I think we would have to act as appropriate if those come to fruition or even look like they're coming to fruition. The biggest concern I have right now is when you talk to business leaders, nobody I, I talk to says that the cost of capital is inhibiting business investment. And that has been the drag on the economy right now, is business investment, not the consumer. The consumer has been the hero of the American economy. So if that's true, right, that business investment is not being held back by the cost of capital, us reducing interest rates will have no effect. What's holding it back is the uncertainty around policy, particularly trade policy. So is there anything for the Fed to do at this moment? Are you feeling pressure to be the savior of the economy because you're the only game in town? So I think we have to act as appropriate when we see the economy uh, having a shock. I don't see that right now, so I don't think we need to act right now. Do you uh, anticipate uh, from what your business contacts are telling you that the economy is going to deteriorate or are they kind of on hold too? A lot of them are on hold. I mean, it's perfectly reasonable if you're sitting in a board right now, a corporate board, not to make a big bet until some of this uncertainty resolves itself. It's an absolutely reasonable thing to do. What are they telling you about uh, their economic outlook? In the absence of trade wars, would they be expanding? Yeah, what we hear is if the, especially around manufacturing, right, if we had more certainty around manufacturing, particularly globally, I mean, there are clear global risks, but those export-led economies like Germany are facing large challenges right now because of this uncertainty. Yeah, if that resolved itself, I think people would be making those investments. There's enough demand in the economy. Yeah. Look at the consumer. The American consumer continues to buy. Would the consumer be the last person, though, to feel <laughs> the change? I mean, if you're waiting yeah. for retail sales to fall off, are you going to then get a signal that's too late? No, but why is the consumer buying? Because the job market continues to be strong, right? The labor markets continue to be strong, and so household incomes continue to be strong. Well, you've got a reaction function that has been based on the idea for decades of controlling inflation and keeping inflation down. Inflation's gone away, as far as most people are concerned right yeah. now, and unemployment keeps going lower and lower. Do you need to change the way you look at the economy? No, I, I think, look, inflation clearly is a conundrum. That is, we don't really understand why it's been low for so long. And this, but it's not necessarily the case, and we see this around the world, that if you have a more accommodative monetary policy, you're going to suddenly move inflation. That's not happened in other countries. And so there's some underlying trends uh, uh, with the economy that are different today than before that we continue to try to understand. In that situation where there's uncertainty, I don't think we should move precipitously in either direction. I think we should stay the course and see how things unfold. We do worry that Wall Street, uh, or global Wall Street, as it were, uh, might overreact to Fed rate cuts and misallocate capital. Yes. I mean, one of the concerns is financial stability. That is, with rates going even lower, uh, leverage rising. And that is a concern for the economy. Do you see it anywhere yet? A little bit in leverage lending, but uh, it's something we need to keep. Uh, it's only something I'm watching. I wouldn't say it's a, a situation that warrants any action at this point. One of the uh, things that came out of the minutes this week was the idea that uh, the Fed should be acting, at least some people on the committee think so, to try to bring inflation up. Yeah. Interest rates, though, were at zero for seven years. Didn't work. Right. So how much validity does that argument have anymore? So, again, I think we're, there are some underlying trends with inflation. But if you look at the latest CPI print, it's moving in the right direction. We are moving around 2 percent. And we're close enough, in my mind, where I don't think we need to take action at this point. Well, as the Fed continues its review, one of the... Uh, issues that's come up is do you let the economy run hot, sure. let inflation run above target for a while to make up? How do you feel about that? So, yeah, average inflation targeting of some form. Yeah. So that's an appealing idea in theory. In practice, it's a little difficult because you are asking a future committee to be, act in a way that the current committee wants it to act. And that's very difficult. 
But if you let that happen, do you worry that inflation could get out of control again? Or are you fairly sanguine about the prospects for uh, prices? So at this point, I don't see inflation running out of control in uh, most scenarios. Of course, there are a few, but generally, no, I don't see that as a risk right now. Well, then what is the Fed's reaction function going to be? What are you going to look at? <laughs> yeah, so I can't speak for the Fed. I can only speak for myself. And again, I look at a strong labor market and rising wages, again, slowly, but rising wages, look at inflation. And one of the things we continue to factor in is the financial stability question. Well, you look at the uh, labor market and you see slowing hiring, um, still above the yeah. replacement rate. But is that because companies can't find workers or because they're getting more cautious? I think a mix of the two. But what I hear more than they're getting cautious is they just can't find the people. And not just people, the skilled positions. We often focus on those. I was talking to a major home builder who said, I can't find people to carry bricks and sticks on the site. Right? And so I'm limited in terms of how many homes I can build. So is this about as good as it gets, then? I don't know. I mean, it's been surprising in a good way that we're bringing more people off the sidelines into the American economy. That's a good thing for the person and for the American economy. And I think there may be a little bit more to run, but probably not a lot more to run. So have you changed your economic outlook uh, based on the trade wars, based on what's happening? Not yet. I mean, we, are, we have predicted going back to trend growth, 2% growth, with the employment numbers coming down to about 100, 110,000 a month. Now, we haven't changed that because the volatility in the policy itself, it's hard to predict and hard to put into any model. Well, if you haven't changed your views, uh, where do you think the, the proper setting for monetary policy is? Several participants uh, in the Open Market Committee del deliberations have told me, you, you look at the Fed funds rate above the yield curve, and that just tells you you're too tight now. I think we're about where we need to be in terms of, I think we're about neutral right now. Do you think that uh, it is a problem that we're going to see a slowing in, fin in financial uh, conditions if, uh, a tightening of financial conditions if the current uh, settings stay? It's a risk, and it's a risk I'm monitoring, but right now I'm not forecasting that, no. So you don't see uh, the markets as disrupting uh, at this point? Well, there's a lot of volatility in the market <laughs> for sure, but, and the people watching know that. But um, disrupting the, 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 the path of the economy. No, not at this point. I think the larger risk is this policy uncertainty, particularly trade uncertainty. And there's nothing you can do about and that. And there's nothing. We <laughs> need to react as appropriate uh, to that. But no, we can't. We don't drive that policy. Do you worry if you're trying to react that you're going to be too late? Well, if I knew what it was, then we could plan. But right now, again, the volatility in the actual policy is too great for me to predict. How hard is it for you to do your job on a daily basis, given the tweeted criticism of the Fed? And I don't mean yeah. in the room when you're making policy decisions, because every Fed person will tell you it doesn't affect us. But you go out and you talk to your constituents. Do you, do you detect a change yeah. in attitude among people these days? The main thing I hear when I'm out and about, and I was out and about in my district all summer uh, meeting with people, is the concern that Fed independence is being threatened. I mean, everybody I talked to said that Fed, even though we're not perfect and we don't always make perfect decisions, that independence of the Federal Reserve is absolutely critical for the American economy. You're not hearing people come up to you and say, you guys are the bad guys. I don't hear much of that, no. In fact, I, all summer, I didn't hear any of that. How much of a threat do you think there is to the Fed independence? Is this more of a media creation than anything else? No, I think we are a creature of Congress, and we are responsible uh, to Congress. And, and so Congress could change the laws. I don't think that's in the foreseeable future. But we have to recognize that Congress has the absolute right to do that. But we need every day to earn the trust of the American people by acting on their behalf. The last question is the same uh, question I put to all of your colleagues, and that is, do you worry we can talk ourselves into recession? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the lack of animal spirits, you know, if that diminishes, that's real. I, I don't sense that that is widespread right now. I think there are some concerns, particularly manufacturing, although our last manufacturing business outlook survey out of Philadelphia was good. So it, while uh, even across the board, manufacturing looks like it's weakening, there are pockets where it's still strong. So you're optimistic about where we go from here? I think we're, I'm cautiously optimistic is the way I would say. Well, what, what does cautiously optimistic mean? H how much of a threat do you think there is? Well, I think if, again, particularly if this policy uncertainty around trade uh, gets worse, uh, we would have to act as appropriate. 
<laughs> you keep using the same phrase that Jay Powell used at his news conferences and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, you mean cutting rates at that point, even if you yeah. think it doesn't work? Uh, well, yeah, because if it starts to affect the consumer, right? So on the business side, I don't think it had that channel is not uh, very strong. But if it starts to affect the consumer and consumer confidence, because the consumer is 70% of the economy, that would have a real impact. So if we could do something in a way that would restore confidence to the consumer and put a little bit more money in their pocket through refinancing or whatever, that would be a good thing. You think they would respond then to lower interest rates? Oh, people respond to refinancing their mortgages for sure. Is there much of that left? <laughs> it depends on where the rates are.